Hello everyone and welcome to our letter of the day today. Our letter for today is Q. Can you say Q? Q. Well, if your name has a Q, stand up. If your name has a Q, stand up. If your name has a Q, if your name has a Q, if your name has a Q, stand up. Well, Q is for quarter, and today we're decorating the letter Q with some coin rubbings. So let me show you what's under this letter Q. Ta-da! I have taped some coins. Two of them are quarters. And then I'm just going to color my letter Q and watch what happens when I color on top of one of the coins. It makes the impression of the coin. That's pretty cool, that's a quarter. That's called a coin rubbing. So every time you run across a coin, you're gonna get to see the impression pop out. So I'm gonna continue and color my whole letter Q. You don't have to tape the coins down, but it just helps them to stay in place so they don't move all around. Wow, there's another one. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Okay, I'm almost done and wow, I can really see all those coins. Here's another quarter on the bottom. Okay, so there you have it. That's the letter Q with all our coins rubbed on there. Well, now that we know what letter Q looks like, let's practice writing the letter Q. And the letter Q is pretty easy because it's just the letter O with the tail. I'll show you what I mean. So we're gonna start at the top. We're going to curve around and back, and then we're going to give it a tail. So it's an O with a tail. I'll show you what that looks like on the handwriting house. So you're gonna make an O upstairs and downstairs, and then you're going to go downstairs right in the middle and then make a tail. So an O with a tail, <laughs> an O with a tail. Make an O with a tail. That is the uppercase letter Q. I'm gonna make a few more so that it gives you a chance to practice. And if you don't have any paper, you can sky write. That just means to pretend you're writing in the sky. And if you want this handwriting house printable, there is a link below so the grown up at your house can get you a copy of this and the lesson plans for this week. Well, the big uppercase Q had an O and so does the lowercase Q. So make a little O and then right beside it, make a line that goes all the way down and then jumps up just a little really quick. Q is for quick. So make an O and then go down and jump up really quick, just a tiny bit. On the handwriting house, the O is gonna be downstairs. And then you're gonna make a line right beside it that goes all the way down into the basement and jumps up really quick. Now Q is a teenager letter, just like letter P that we just learned about. So that means it can go down and hang out in the basement. Maybe Q and P are both down there playing games and having fun. So make an O and then a line that goes down and jump up really quick. That is the little lowercase Q and I can't wait to cheer for you. I know you're working so hard on your handwriting. Great work, everybody. And you can pause and practice some more or maybe do some more for homework. Well, now for the sound that letter Q makes. Letter Q says, qua, qua, qua. Can you try to make that sound? Letter Q says, qua, qua, qua. Good job. Letter Q says what? Qua, qua, qua. 
as in quiet. So take your finger and put it on your lips like this. Letter Q says qua, 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 as in quiet. Well, we're going to play the quiet game to help you practice that letter sound. So I'm gonna set the timer and I'm gonna say go. And then I want you to see how quiet you can be. We'll see if you can win. Okay, here we go. On your marks, get set, go. Wow, that was so hard. You're so good at the quiet game. Let's do it again. But first, tell me, what does Q sound like? Q says, qua, 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 as in quiet. So let's try it again on your marks. Get set, go. Whoa, you did a great job. It's so hard for me to be quiet, but you did a good job. You win. Well, that's what letter Q says. Q says qua, 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 as in quiet. Well, I want to tell you about letter Q. Q has a best friend. Do you have a best friend? On the count of three, I want you to shout out who your best friend is, okay? One, two, three. Who's your best friend? Let's do it again. On the count of three, shout out whoever your best friend is. One, two, three. Who's your best friend? Well, guess who's Q's best friend is? Q's best friend is you. The letter U, that is. So every time you see Q at the beginning of a word, you usually see Q's best friend, you. Q and you go everywhere together. Do you and your best friend maybe go to church together or to the park or maybe to a restaurant or see a movie together? Well, Q and you do everything together too. You're going to see you right beside Q in most words, especially when the Q is at the beginning. Well, we're gonna do some blending with Q and you and, and Q, you makes the same sound as Q. Qua, qua, qua. So can you remember what those vowels are? The vowels are A, E, I, O, U, A, E, I O U A E I O U. These are the vowels. Well, these are the vowels that we've learned so far. And I'm going to put Q and his best buddy U right beside each of these vowels. Okay, I forgot to tell you my best friend when we were sharing. My best friend is Jesus for sure. Okay, well, let's see if we can do some blending. We know what Q sounds like. And you, Q, you says qua, 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 as in quiet. Do you remember what A says? Ah, ah, what does A say? Ah, <laughs> that's what A says. So let's blend together. Qua, ah, qua. Qua, like quack, 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 quack. Now, do you remember what letter E says, Sonny? What does E say? E looks like an ear. And E says, eh, eh. What'd you say? Eh. Good job. Well, let's blend. Qua, eh, qua, qua. You did it again. I know you know what letter I sounds like because I looks like a lollipop and icky sticky. Oh, oh, an icky sticky lollipop. Eh. So let's blend. You ready? Qua, eh, qua, 
quick, quick, like quick. Well, let's quickly do one more. Let's blend the Q and the U with an O, but I wonder if you remember that my friend O has a sore throat and has to go to the doctor. My friend O says, ah, ah. So let's blend, you ready? Qua, ah, qua, qua. You did it. You did some blending and that's the first step to reading. Qua, 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 and qua. We'll keep adding more letters and more vowels. Right now though, it is time for some math and we are going to do something really fun because Q is for quarter and a quarter is a coin that we use in the United States. There are four main coins that we use here in the United States and they look like this. Let me go back, hold down one second and I'll show you. The four coins are, hmm, let me pull it up. Hold on just a second and I'll pull it up. Okay, now I've got it. Here are the four coins. So the first coin that you can see here is a penny. A penny is kind of brown in color. That's because pennies are made using a metal called copper, and it makes it look brown like that. So the penny is worth one cent. Now this is a nickel. That's the back and the front of a nickel. A nickel is worth five cents. This is a dime. A dime is the smallest coin, but not in value. A dime is worth 10 cents. Can you see the flame and the leaves on the back? This is a quarter. Q is for quarter. A quarter is the one that is the biggest and it also has the biggest value. A quarter is worth 25 cents. Look at the bird on the back of this quarter. Okay, so now I'm going to play a little game with you and we're going to see if we can practice the names of those coins, okay? So let's do that now. Oops, I messed up. I clicked the wrong thing. I was trying to get it to load. Let me try that again, okay? Sorry, my... I'm having some technical difficulties. Okay, so I'm going all the way back to the beginning. Here we go, here we go. There's where I wanted to start. So this is a piggy bank and we're gonna see, look at all those piggies. We're gonna see if we can name the coins that we see on the jar. All right, do you remember the name of time? and I'll click it for us. I'm gonna go out and back in just to make sure that I shared the sound. I did. All right, so that one is a dime. And that girl is saying, awesome. Do you remember this one? It has a bird on the back. What coin is this? It's a quarter, a quarter. What about this one? That one has the leaves and the torch. That one is a dime. Can you say dime? Awesome. This one is brown. Do you remember the coin that's brown? That's a penny. Good work, a penny. Do you remember this one? This is called a nickel. Can you say nickel? Now this one is the one we're talking about today. It starts with letter Q. It's the biggest one. It's a quarter, a quarter. Oh, which one was this again? That's a penny and that's the back side of it. Good work. Okay, this one is a nickel, a nickel. This is the back of a nickel. 
Can you say nickel? What was this coin? A penny, good, a penny. Well, this time we're going to see if you can find the coins. I want you to try to find the quarter. Remember the quarter has a bird on the back. Can you spot the quarter? Mm hmm there's the quarter. Good job, let's click it. Awesome. Can you spot the nickel? Which coin is the nickel? It's this one right here. There's the nickel. Say nickel. Can you find the penny? Which one is the penny? Point on your screen. Right there and you are right. I'm going to click it for us. Can you find the dime? It has leaves on the back and a torch. There's that dime. Good job, everybody. Let's click it together. Can you find the quarter? This is the last one. It has a bird on the back. There's the quarter. Good job again. Let's click it. Awesome. And you really did do awesome today in math. Well, we're going to head over to the art table now and make a bank to hold all your quarters and nickels and dimes and pennies. I'll see you at the art table. Well, here we are at the art table and we're going to be making a bank. You just need to find a container. Any kind of container would work. I just found this empty container in my cupboard and washed it out. You could use a Kleenex or a tissue box. That makes a great bank. You could use a jar. You could use a potato chip canister. Any kind of container that will hold your coins would make a nice bank. The first thing we're going to do is cover our bank with some colorful paper. I think, mm, I think I'll make mine pink. So I'm just going to take the paper, cut it to the size of the container. And I'm just gonna wrap it all the way around. Okay, next I'm going to decorate it. And I have some stickers, so I think I'll put Spider-Man on there. <laughs> and I also have Thomas the Tank Engine, so maybe I'll put a few Thomas the Tank Engine stickers on there too. So once you get your bank decorated, all you have to do is put the top back on and then get a grown up to poke a hole in the top. And then you're ready to add your coins. Let's try this bank out. Oh, there's a quarter and here's another quarter. This is going to be a great bank for saving all my coins. Well, I'm going to come around now and I'm going to show you another idea that you might use to make a bank. You really can make a bank using any kind of container. And I even made one from a poster container. <laughs> I made a big giant crayon and I'm going to use that to save my money. See, this is just a poster canister and it makes a really cool giant bank. Wow, I'll get a lot of coins if I fill this up. Okay, well, that was our art project for today. And for social studies, we're going to be learning about money. So take a look at this. Have you ever wondered where money is made? Money is made at a place called a mint. Hey, I bet you've heard of that word, but do you usually hear the word mint in association with candy like peppermint? Well, this is a building, not a candy. It's called the U.S. or United States Mint, and it's where coins and money are made. 
after the coins are made at the mint, they're sent to a big bank. The big bank is called the Federal Reserve Bank. The big bank sends the money to smaller banks. People get money from the smaller banks and they can use that money to buy things at the store or they can save their money. So let's talk about that once more. Money is made at a U.S. Mint. After it's made, it's sent to a big bank, the Federal Reserve Bank. The big bank sends it to smaller banks like the ones in your city or town. People get money from their bank and they can use that money to buy things or to save. Let's take a look at what a mint looks like. This is the United States Mint in Philadelphia. It's a big building and inside, they're making lots of coins. Can you remember what the name of this coin is? It's brown. It's a penny. Wow, look at all the pennies getting sorted. Look at these quarters. The quarters are also getting made and sorted and weighed. They're getting ready to go to the big Federal Reserve Bank. Well, this is a closer look at a quarter. A quarter has some specific parts to it and all the coins do. For one thing, the quarter has the United States of America on the front of it. That's because this is the kind of coin that we use here in the United States. But did you know that other countries use different kinds of coins? If you feel of a quarter, you can tell that it's not flat. There's some raised parts and we call that a relief. Right here is a little marking that tells which mint made this quarter. This part of the quarter that has a face on it is called the head. This part, the backside, is called tails. Would you like to play a game right now with me? I want you to say heads or tails and guess which way my coin will land. Are you ready? Shout out heads or you can choose tails. Okay, let's see. It landed on tails on the back side. Did you get it right? Let's do it again, okay? Choose heads or tails. Okay, let's flip. It was on tails again. Did you guess tails? Well, let's do it one more time. Guess heads or tails. Okay, here we go. What did you guess? was tails again. It was tails again. Oh my goodness. Well, have some fun. Maybe you want to do that. Maybe your family can tell whether it says heads or tails. Most of our money also contains something I didn't talk about. It says in God we trust. And I hope that that is always written on our money because it's the most important thing. It's more important than money. It's more important than anything that we realize that God loves us and in God we trust. Well, I have a story for you today. That story is called, You Can't Buy a Dinosaur with a Dime. Let's read that together now. You Can't Buy a Dinosaur with a Dime by Harriet Zeifert. Clink, 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 clinkety. Money saved in a bank makes your brain think thinkity. Pete has nickels, quarters, dimes. He'd like to buy a toy. If he can pay for what he wants, he'll be a happy boy. Mom said, Pete, the money's yours to spend at Harry's store. And if you choose to spend it all, then you can save some more. Pete finds a scary dinosaur as green as sour pickles. He wonders how much it will cost in quarters, dimes, and nickels. Pete lines all his quarters up and then adds seven dimes. Unsure of the total sum, he counts it two more times. Pete's bank is almost empty now. He puts it on a shelf. He has a brand new dinosaur and 30 cents total wealth. 
Pete holds Tyrannosaurus Rex. He names him Dino Jack. Then he reads him a comic book. It says, if dinosaurs came back. At dinner, Pete is looking sad. He wishes for more money. Though he likes his dinosaur, an empty bank feels funny. You'll get $2, said his dad, if you clean up the yard. Then you can start to save again. The work is not too hard. Pete carries out old papers and sweeps the dirty floor. He sorts through the recycling and puts it by the door. Here are eight new quarters, his dad says with a smile. Pete is glad to get them. He'll save them for a while. When Pete gets his allowance, he puts it in his bank. Five dimes and five nickels, clinkety clinkety clank. Lucky Pete, he finds a dime on his way to school. He sells six baseball cards to Kate, who thinks the cards are cool. He puts the money in his bank, six nickels and a dime. Forty cents goes through the slot, one coin at a time. Pete hears the car keys jingling. Dad's walking out the door. I'd like to come along, says Pete, to shop at Harry's store. The store is full of pretty things all lined up row by row, but Pete is after dinosaurs and knows just where to go. A small dino costs $2. A triceratops is three. Pete says, the little dinosaur is a better price for me. Pete makes a tough decision. Dad's waiting at the door. He chooses Stegosaurus and won't spend any more. Pete carries his own package. Dad says, let's get a snack and you can bank your money as soon as we get back. Clink, 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 clinkety. Money saved in a bank makes your brain think Thinkity. The end. Well, I hope that you get to make a bank today for collecting all your coins and saving them and maybe even spend just a little for a dinosaur like Pete or something else fun. I will see you next time for our next letter of the day. Until then, goodbye.